Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hayford. I'm a content creator. And today's video is about the diaspora transition episode where I interview people, you know, who moved back from the diaspora and are doing great and even people visiting back and forth. And then just to ask them about their experience, what did they think of Ghana before coming here and how's it going? So if it's something you're interested in, stay tuned. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Chief Enjoyment Minister. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. I cannot wait. Mm. I am ready to mm. spill all of the tea. All the tea. Whatever you want to <laughs> know, ask me and I'll do my best to answer. All right, that's beautiful. <laughs> so thank you so much for um, me honoring my invitation. Absolutely. And um, for the you know viewers watching, they don't know who you are. I know who you are a little bit, I mm. think so. so you are the chief enjoyment minister wow. but introduce yourself for the people watching if it's their first time watching or seeing you okay so if it's your first time watching my name is Shemaine but I refer to myself as the chief enjoyment minister because I mean who doesn't love enjoyment right mm -hmm. so. okay so why Ghana out of 55 countries you know what Ghana's home Wow Ghana's home Ghana I might not have been born here mm. but Ghana my roots are in Ghana Okay, so. <laughs> from your accent, I know where you came from, uh -huh. but in, for the viewer's sake, where do you move from? Well, I was born and raised in Atlanta, uh -huh. but I am Ghana bred, mm. American fed, let's just say that. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So, did you have any expectations, um, you know, I don't know how to call it, fairy tales about what Ghana would look like? Honestly, I think social media has done a very good job of beefing up the country mm. and like all the, you know, high class places, all the cool things, mm -hmm. all the beaches, all the tourist mm -hmm. attractions. Social media has done a superb job right. of that. So I don't think that before I got here, my expectations, before all the social mm -hmm. media, my expectations weren't of, oh, Ghana's a touristy place. Right. In my head, Ghana was a place where family, you know, beaches, tropical weather, that's mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I love. I love the heat. I mm -hmm. love, you know, the weather here and mm -hmm. everything. So. For me, it was just like, okay, I'm coming back mm -hmm. home. I'm coming to see family and things mm -hmm. like that. Now, when the year of return, you know, came into play and everything, that's mm -hmm. when I feel like Ghana started becoming a tourist attraction. Right, right. And yeah. then, did it, did it meet your expectations, though? Because I've heard a lot of people, you know, getting disappointed. Well, so, some are saying Ghana's PR is too much, mm -hmm. and it's. it's what I'm is your take on that? that? Yes, I'm glad you brought that up because Ghana definitely, as I said, they do beef up mm. um, certain things in the country. And then right. when you get here, it's just like, okay, for instance, you'll go to a fine restaurant, a mm -hmm. fine establishment, mm -hmm. and you'll expect creme de la creme <laughs> treatment. But then you get there and you're like, wait, customer service, where is it? Wow. You know, delivery, where is mm. it? Um, you know, you'll go somewhere and then you'll order something off the menu, right? They'll come and say, may I take your order? Hmm. Then after you tell them everything you want in detail, they'll come back and say, please, we don't have. have wow. So it's just like, you know, some of these things, I think training is a very integral part, like a huge integral part of just customer mm -hmm. service, just giving people the fine dining mm -hmm. experience. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's lacking yeah quite a bit yeah. i think you told me about the customer care in u.s mm -hmm. and other places i mean you work even though you have your, you have your monthly salary mm -hmm. you still get tips and right. because of that you're always you know trying your best to you know pr give the best customer care mm -hmm. service ever absolutely. is that the case here in ghana absolutely not so from what i've seen i've never worked in customer care in ghana mm -hmm. however in the states I was in customer service for about 10 years, maybe more. Wow. And I can tell you that being a server, mm -hmm. our monthly uh, rate, or mm -hmm. not monthly rate, our hourly rate was $2.13. Wow. After you take out taxes and everything and they give you your ch paycheck back, it's not even enough to fill your gas. So we rely heavily on tips. Mm. In addition to that, I'm someone who I hold customer service very dear to my heart because your customer service your customers it's make stuff right your customers make your business without customers you you wouldn't have mm. anything so i think that you need to take care of your customers so they want to keep coming back and mm. word of mouth plays a large role in whatever business you have wow if you have a negative experience somewhere people are going to talk about it and tell their friends wow. right yeah so i feel like 
And a lot of, and I think that's a re another reason mm -hmm. some businesses don't last long in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Everybody's all about the hype, but when it comes to maintaining the hype, it becomes very difficult. Very difficult. Well, I mean, I don't know if complaining is a good thing. Most people look at you like the diaspora is coming. It's like you guys are enjoying too much because just because of your accent, you guys are treated differently mm. than the ordinary Ghanaian would and be treated. I hate it. What do you think about that? Is that an advantage? Or just let me know what you, what do you think about For it. For me personally, it's an advantage, but it's not something I condone because mm -hmm. I'm very huge on not looking down on people. Right. I don't want to walk into a, an establishment and be treated one way because of the way I look or the right. way I talk. Mm -hmm. These are things you hear about in America. These are discrimination. Mm -hmm. This is discrimination that you hear about in uh, America. It shouldn't be happening in right. Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I should be w able to walk into an establishment and somebody who lives here locally maybe not maybe let's say middle class ghana should be able to walk into the same establishment wow. and receive the same wow. treatment same wow. level level of treatment what do you think of the class system system here in ghana <sighs> That's be thing. honest honestly because then i i was speaking to someone right before um, I, I we had this mm -hmm. interview and he he's he's you know he moved from ivory coast to ghana mm -hmm. and he said he has never experienced classism in that extreme manner than he has experienced here in Ghana. I don't know what you have to say about that. No, I 100% agree, and it's very alive here. I don't agree with it. I, I'm not a fan of it. Mm. Um, and it just goes back to don't treat anyone differently just because of their appearance or the way they speak. Mm -hmm. They're all We're all here patronizing the same business. Mm. My money is just as good as your money. Wow. So my customer service that I receive should not differ from your customer okay. service. But it's talking about money. They say you guys bring a lot of money to Ghana. Did oh, you bring Charlie, a lot of where's money? Where's the money? Because we're not seeing the money. We're not seeing the money. I mean, Ghana, I think the diaspora, the way we see it, we're just yeah. like, oh, it, it's a home away from home. Right. And it's more enjoyment. Because when we go back to the States, when we go back to mm -hmm. the UK, wherever we came mm -hmm. from, it's work, work, work. Yeah. Right? But when we come here, we can bring that money over here and enjoy. Wow. That's wow. maybe what it's like. And as I was saying, like, mm -hmm. earlier on a... Mm -hmm on another platform that pricing mm -hmm. <laughs> the way they price for me may not be the way they price for you exactly right mm -hmm. and i feel like we should not be so quick to just pay for it because we have it because mm -hmm. that sets the precedent for the locals here once we leave and it's just left with the locals right. they'll have to be paying Maintain those that. hiked prices and that's unfair so you are advising people to start bargaining? Oh, absolutely. Do you bargain? Yeah, please, <laughs> please bargain. Please bargain when you come here. Do not accept the first price they give you, I beg. <laughs> Have you been to Mokola before? Yes. Do you bargain when you go there? Oh, yes. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Anytime, <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> if you're watching this and you can't bargain, she's here. Her socials <laughs> are on the screen. Go with her. She'll help you out. So, um, what do you think about the cost of you know living in, in Ghana oh. compared when was the last time you visited Ghana? Twenty. I was here in January. January. Mm -hmm. Okay. Compare January till now. We are in June. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Is, is it going higher? Is it the same, or is it going? It's lower? absolutely going higher. I mean, gas prices alone. Last May, I was mm -hmm. here. Gas was about five to six cities a right. liter per liter in yes. May. Now, what are we looking at? Ten, eleven cities per 10 liter. Ten point nine nine. How? Petrol. And then diesel is almost 14. It's 13 I mean, now. How? Because when you compare it and you make the, um, you translate it into like dollars and things like it's that. It's the same in the US. Not even. In some places in the US, more. Ghana is more. Expensive. Exactly. I made a documentary about this. If you've not watched it, go check <laughs> it out. And I, I used more general, I generalized the whole of US. Mm -hmm. And then in US, the average gas price is $5 and maybe some cents. Something like and then when you you know convert that into cities is probably 38 per gallon mm -hmm. 38 cities mm -hmm. and that's the same i'm paying as if i'm living in america absolutely but and you're not receiving the, the salary same, exactly and it's so frustrating because i'm just like how are people how are people doing it so what does this mean to the you know Ghanaians living here and the diasporans who are looking to to move to ghana diasporans just <laughs> look alive be aware because it's not even though in some ways mm -hmm. Ghana is more affordable than the States, in some ways, like the hotels. I mean, you'll go to some places that are charging three in dollars though. Mm -hmm. They're charging three hundred dollars plus a night. Meanwhile, you go to the States mm -hmm. and it's not even like the caliber of hotels is much higher, higher. but they're not charging three hundred dollars mm -hmm. a night. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you ex have a five star experience and then you would have to pay for it in the US and other places. Mm -hmm. Here you have like two star and you're paying five star kind of price. I saw an Airbnb somewhere <laughs> for 1,700. No, for what? For night and night. For why? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> for why? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's crazy. Will you advise people, you know, someone is watching this, they, they want to visit the motherland, you know, would you tell them? Absolutely, no? because we so want to share our culture with you. It's amazing here. Mm. Other than the little details and the, you know, kind of the traffic, the mm -hmm. small frustrations, that right. is a beautiful place to mm -hmm. visit. So I'll definitely encourage you to come over. Are we you would sure? love to have you. Oh, Are you sure? I'm so sure. Just Regardless bargain. Bargain. Do bargain. you still see your <laughs> money in U.S. dollars or now you're translating to the Ghana city? I mean, uh -huh. when that's when come, you're like, oh, it's so cheap. Don't worry. I just no. People tipping. I was with a friend who moved from the U.K. just on a tour. And then she ended up tipping someone like 400 Ghana cities. Mm. And I'm like, give her because three months. <laughs> because when the money starts finishing, we don't, when it's in, when it's in cities, we don't really respect it because exactly. the city keeps dropping. Mm -hmm. But honey, lo like give it three months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> give it three months. You'll look at your bank account and be like, wait, what? Yeah. It's little, 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 but it adds up. It wow. definitely adds up. Even the Ubers and stuff like that, they add up. The grocery stores, the shop. Well, I don't want to say it out loud, but the grocery stores, you know, the ones who are more like Americanized mm -hmm. or Westernized mm -hmm. standards, mm -hmm. it's pretty much the are same. Are you trying to say it's expensive to live in Ghana? Ab absolutely. Really? Um, and I'm speaking from the point of someone who is local mm -hmm. as well as a diaspora. Okay. Right. I mean, because you guys earn in U.S. dollars, sometimes you don't really feel the pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, can you imagine someone taking 600 cities a month and mm -hmm. living in this yeah. Accra here? And that's why I'm like, it's outrageous for it's crazy. people living here. It's crazy. This is a beautiful conversation. <laughs> and I mean, I love, I love how it's going so far. We are going to dive in relationship. That's oh. where the tea will be spilled. <laughs> Ooh, so um, you've been here for some time now. Mm -hmm. I think you are Ghanaian yourself, mm -hmm. but then you were born in America. Mm -hmm. You've been back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sure you've dated some Ghanaian men, mm -hmm. both diaspora and pure Ghanaian men. Mm -hmm. I asked people to rate Ghanaian men and the numbers they gave me, I didn't mm -hmm. really like it. Because do you know, Ghana men, Ghanaian men are the most faithful in the whole of West Africa. Says who? <laughs> <laughs> Says who? Well. What's your take on that and what's your experience dating a Ghanaian man? Honestly, I think that it just will depend on the individual. Mm -hmm. But Ghanaian men overall, like on a whole, mm -hmm. we, m like I myself living in the diaspora, right. you have, you know, your moms, mm -hmm. your aunties, everyone. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Like, it, let's say you would be dating a guy here right. in Ghana and living in the US. Oh, girl, are you sure? Be careful, though. Those Ghanaian men. Yeah. Those Ghanaian men. Yeah. They like boys, mm -hmm. boys. They like mm -hmm. this. They like that. So, mm -hmm. It puts the fear of God in yeah. you to even like want to date mm. a Ghanaian man. But wow. uh, at the end of the day, I think it just boils down to the individual, how they treat you, mm -hmm. how you, the two of you relate. Mm -hmm. Just as long as there's un that understanding, mm -hmm. I think you'll be okay. But the d long distance is yet is hot. You can't. You can't do long distance. I mean, I have. Okay. I you know I can, okay. but it just takes a, 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 a lot. lot more effort. Okay. I, I I asked a girl, and then she's an American who moved there, and she's like. A lot of men move to her because of what they can get mm -hmm. financially. Has that been? I, don't, I asked another girl too from the Caribbean, and it's like I've never really bought food from my own pack, uh, my own um, mm -hmm. wallet in a very long time. And people offer to Ghanaian men offer to buy me free things. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be two sides of the story. Has that been the case for you, where men would try to take advantage because of your diaspora and yeah. you know you might have a little cash in you, and mm -hmm. someone will try to take advantage of that? So let me speak on it on a, as a whole. Okay. I personally, this is my own preference, mm -hmm. please, mm -hmm. but I prefer to date Ghanaian men. Mm -hmm. I prefer Ghanaian men to any other, you know, really? culture because it's my Your it's my people. culture and my people and. Most likely, nine times out of ten, I'll be able to share the same morals. You want to understand them and more. upbringing okay. with a Ghanaian man. Um, now, when it comes to a guy having taken advantage of me, I haven't really experienced Aww, that. You're so lucky. <laughs> yeah, and I'm very hard. Yeah. I will not like. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't deal with nonsense. So a lot of people wouldn't even, yeah. wouldn't even step to me Try to begin. It. Okay. Right. So, um, and I think 
Ghanaian men are more generous. Like, let's mm. say more than the black Americans. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. Wow. In okay. my experience. Okay, okay. So, based on all those things, take all those things into consideration. Generosity, nice, and everything. Compared to the uh, black Americans, rate Ghanaian men and then rate black American men. Oh, if we're rating that way, mm. Ghanaian men, eight. Eight. Black American I men. I told you, man. Black American men, four. Four. You I see? won't go there. This is what I'm <laughs> telling you. Okay, you're watching this, the whole of West Africa. You want faithful men, honest, caring, look no further. Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Ghana <laughs> don't take me too serious. <laughs> so um will you advise or uh, you know any friend to you know marry or date a Ghanaian man though? Hmm. Honestly. It depends on what they're looking for. Serious relationship. Of course I'm gonna journey. promote my own. Right? Right? But it, it does depend on what you're looking for. But you know what? Mm. One one topic that nobody wants to address. Okay, let's see. Ghanaian men, they don't seem to like their own. Hmm. They don't seem to value us. But that's a topic for another no, day. No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> they don't I can value promise us. you I was speaking with someone about this before you got here. Mm -hmm. And he's like, look, I roll with some big men. And then anytime we're in a meeting, they come with everything else but not black people. Mm -hmm. And when they are with black people, they seem not to be too proud or to show, even them, show them off. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think the problem is, though? <laughs> Why is it happening like that? I wish I knew, because I feel like if you take, from what I've seen, if you take a Ghanaian man mm. and give him a black American woman versus take a Ghanaian man, that same Ghanaian mm. man and give him a Ghanaian woman, he's going to treat the black American better, in my opinion. Why? We don't like all. And own? we were raised to be submissive. Mm -hmm. We were raised to be this, to be that. Right. But to be honest, I don't think the men like that. They want somebody who's going to box Challenge them around. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, I think that might be the issue. Mm -hmm. And then I've heard, of, like, I have a lot of, you know, guy friends. And right. I hear them saying, um, you know, Ghanaian women just like money. And yeah. they just want you to take care of them. Right. And, you know, they don't bother don't educating so? themselves. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. the, the Ghanaian men in, or the Ghanaian women in okay. Ghana. Mm -hmm. Do you think I it's agree. a good thing, though? No. 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 Sis, hold your own. Hold your own bag because you can't have any man treating you any type of way right. because you're relying on him for money. Right. So now you've spoken about, let's <laughs> talk about women empowerment. Mm -hmm. You've been on the continent. You know, I've seen what you're doing. You know, the enjoyment part mm -hmm. mostly. You, you seem to be m very independent mm -hmm. and you, you love your job. You've been working back and forth. Mm -hmm. What would you say to young Africans, women, African women, you know, who is trying to be independent mm -hmm. or trying to hold their own, like you said? Mm -hmm. What would be the best advice for, for best someone Best advice watching? is just please stick to school. School, um, as much as it may be expensive and everything like that, at the end of the day, it looks good on your CV, like number one. Right. Sometimes I feel that school is a scam, but go anyway. Get your basic degree, please, like your college degree. Mm -hmm. If you're able to, like if you're presented with the opportunity to do so, please just get it. Mm -hmm and try to build something for yourself. I know it's easier said than done. It's easier in the States, especially, but that's where networking comes in, right? Um, I know I was promoting this one app. I don't know if I'm, if I'm allowed to say, but this app, one app is called Fishbowl. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to promote it on my um, social media and a lot of people came back to me saying that it's not available in, in Ghana. I know in some, um, sometimes you may be able to like download a VPN right, to, to make it look like, some yeah. apps that so are if you're available. able to do that, please do it because mm -hmm. it's an awesome networking platform for careers, for just networking in general, whatever you're trying to do in life, achieve in life, there are people on there for it and you're anonymous. So if you're too scared to speak up or you feel like you don't want someone to know who you are mm -hmm. or what you're asking, you can ask about salary. You can ask about experience. You can ask about so many different things. Wow. On top of that, LinkedIn. I know LinkedIn. a majority okay. of you are familiar heard, with LinkedIn. I had someone who said LinkedIn are for old people. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Utilize it. If Let's say you want to be um, in IT, right? I would advise you to go on LinkedIn, Google IT professionals, mm -hmm. whether in Ghana, whether in the US, you, mm -hmm. you know, start a relationship with anyone and just kind of pick their brain. Mm -hmm. 
Ask them what they like. Ask them what they don't like. Ask them what their day to day is. Set up a time. People like it when you set up some time on the calendar. It makes them feel important. <laughs> so you know, go up to them and say, you know, I would. Um, I'm in the IT field. I would love to further my career. I see that this is what you do. Do you mind if I mm -hmm. um, take some time, like set out some time on your calendar mm -hmm. and just have a chat with you? Right. No, I, I had um, this situation where most females here in Ghana are complaining that anytime they try to you know, work or connect or link with someone to really pick their brain, mostly men try to take advantage mm -hmm. and try to be like, okay, I love you, I like you. Uh, it's either we do this before I can, you know, do you think? I, I think it's very much true mm. in, in Ghana. I've never experienced someone trying to uh, chat to me or like hit on me on LinkedIn. Never. Never. It's okay. discouraged. Okay. So if you feel like your experience is that you're going on LinkedIn and you're getting targeted or mm -hmm. hit on by men, mm -hmm. reach out to women. Okay. You okay. know, just reach out to women to play it safe and reach out yeah. to women. Now, let me ask you this. Independent women in Ghana, most feel attacked by men because they feel like, oh, I hate girls who have their shit together oh. and I lose control. Eh. Uh -huh. eh. So eh. most of them feel attacked. Do you feel attacked being an independent woman? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Tell me about it. And give I me one scenario. Like, um, I can't give you a specific scenario, but I do feel mm. like it limits the type of men that approach me and okay. I mean I like it like that mm -hmm. because then it weeds out the yeah the, the trash, ones I don't yeah. want you know mm -hmm, what I mean mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I mean I love it okay it's, so it's hard a win -win for you yeah it's hard sometimes but at the end of the day for mm -hmm. me it's worth it because it shows my worth mm. and you can't come and talk to me anyhow mm. <laughs> wow yeah now this, this is amazing yeah. you know let's talk about being black uh, American in Ghana one more time you said a little about it earlier on on how you're being treated but in general Generally, what is it like being black American in Ghana? So I are always tell people, please, I am not a black American. Mm -hmm. I am an African, African. American. Mm -hmm. I am Ghanaian American. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak to the black American. Okay. But for those who don't know better, like maybe let's say the white people, mm -hmm. they can't tell the difference between us. But what is so the difference though? Because then difference. I they are Africans. Are they? Not I all of us. Someone so asked me a question. I told him, look, every black person is from Africa. You are black American, you are from Africa. It's like, okay, so where were the Africans from? Mm. I'm like, okay, that's a good question. Yeah, but you know what? A lot of them don't even know where in Africa they come from. And a lot of them are mixed. They don't know that they're mixed or they won't want to claim mm -hmm. it, but they are mixed with mm -hmm. other things, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So even though they may be from Africa mm -hmm. way, way back, they don't really know how to trace yeah. it. I feel like I can trace my roots. Oh, really? I, the only thing separating me from a local American is my passport okay. or my my birthplace. Okay. I speak the language. I eat the food. I engage in the culture. Mm -hmm. I'm very deep rooted into mm -hmm. where I come from. I spoke to a Black American or African American, Jack Soul. He's the CEO of Jack Soul, okay. Judah, and then he said. Um, when they were growing up in the U.S., they used to see Africa to be, you know, the land of, you know, hunger, poverty. You see children with flies on their faces, and they didn't want to associate themselves with that. It's like I don't want to go to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then somehow I see, I see even people living on the continent don't even love it. They want to escape to the U.S. and other places. Do you think it's inferiority complex, or we don't know who we are, and that's why we, you know, we behave like that and try, you know, escape and then hide under some you know kind of country like okay i'm not an african but i'm american mm -hmm. meanwhile your mom or your grandmother grew up in a village somewhere in the northern part of Ghana. it's definitely that and what the media portrays in my right. opinion because i i was although mm -hmm. i didn't grow up here i did live in ghana for two years when i was okay. a baby though very little so when i got back and i started grade school like kindergarten i had an accent okay and i was picked on and I'll tell you that a lot of the worst insults came from black Americans. Oh, really? What was you that? You were the African booty scratchers. You was know. it that intense, though? Yes. Really? Oh, yes. And you know, sometimes when you're home and your parents or your mom's cooking or dad's cooking and the house smells like food and then you go to school smelling like food and, you know, they use that to make fun of you, like anything. Wow. Um, 
oh, look at how dark your skin is. Look at your monkey, you know. Just stuff like that, serious. really mean things. This is kind of racism. I only see it in it China racism. and other places like that. It is racism. Uh -huh. And to get it from people who look similarly to you is, is it's harsh. Bad. But then yeah. now all of a sudden, the media portrays Africa as, or Ghana as a tourist destination. Now everybody's trying to Want rush back. It's like, but wait. I was the African booty but snatcher, But somehow remember? it was not their fault, you know, because of the programming they had watching TV. Yeah. And then they, they don't want to associate themselves and somebody feel they are better than you. Mm -hmm. You know, but now the, the um, not, I don't know how to call this, but then the story is switching where people are becoming more proud to be Ghanaians mm -hmm. or to be African. And that's why I feel like people like me who were born, you know, mm -hmm. outside but are, are Ghanaian mm -hmm. was wanted to shy away from our mm. culture is because the way other people looked at us. Yeah. But I learned from a very young age to be proud of where I come from. Okay. You know? Someone told me, listen, because you have a US passport and that's why you are talking like mm -hmm. this. If you had no passport and you were Ghanaian, you wouldn't be speaking the same language. Is yeah. that true? Um, the language of which language is that? I mean like saying I love myself, I'm a Ghanaian, I'm African, I love being African. But for a while we didn't. When we were very, very young and people made fun of us, mm. we didn't. Okay. But we had to face, see we get it from both sides. It's like okay. the half caste people are not accepted by the blacks and they're not accepted by the whites. Exactly. We, a lot of the time, are not accepted by, like they call me Akata, you <laughs> they guys call me Akata, yeah. I'm like, oh please don't call me Akata, Akata. And then the <laughs> black Americans will, you know, be like, you're not one of us. Yeah. I'm like, look, I don't even want to be yeah. one of anyway. So <laughs> it is what it is. You're not accepted in all <laughs> either side. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. I spoke to um, light skinned people and they're like, look, when I go to the US, they call me uh, an African. Mm -hmm. When I come to African, they call me Obroni. I'm mm -hmm. not Obroni, mm -hmm. you know. But I think um, it's people being ignorant mm -hmm. because they are not educated and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I mean, things like this make people really understand who we are. Are we mm -hmm. the same people? And you know what? So, so let's yeah. let's talk about something else. Let's okay. talk about the challenges um, you face. Three major challenges you face since you moved back to the continent. Mm -hmm. That you think can be changed or improved upon? Or since I've been here. Since you've been here, sorry. Um, three major things. Challenges. Mm -hmm. or, or challenges. Right. Definitely order. <laughs> order. Things like rules and regulations being put in place and not being practiced. Mm. Number one. Number mm. two, customer service is always, yeah. you know. I thought customer service would be number one. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that is number one. But I think <laughs> if there was more order in the country, customer service would be better. True. You know, I think they're interrelated. And number three, mm -hmm. every day, life so every oh, day. Oh, doom so. Is it <laughs> happening right now? It's been a long time I experienced it though. Oh. It still happening. It still happens. Wow. It still happens. Uh, they'll shut off your water. Water, yes. It's annoying. Wow. <laughs> so these are the main, so let's end on a good note. What are the, you know, some amazing things you've experienced? It's like, oh, I love this. This oh. makes me love Ghana so much. Three. I mean, okay, so I do feel like Ghana is more chill and mm. laid back compared to the U.S. Okay. Um, you can step out of your house and mm -hmm. enjoy the weather and go buy some fruits on the roadside. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that convenience. Right. I love the fact that we have so much, like, we have, like, beaches. We have right. every, most things, let mm -hmm. me not say everything, most things that you can find in the States, you can find in Ghana alone versus, like, where I live, like, in um, Atlanta, we don't have a beach the closest beach is four hours away. Wow. But in well, Ghana, I guess I could say that for Ghana, too. Yeah. Like, if you live in the well, north and yeah. things. And you want to come down here. Yeah. Yeah. Or even, I think now, Pram Pram is closer when you mm -hmm. live in Accra. You can easily go to even Labadi, no, Pram Pram. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's It's, it's, it's interesting. just nice. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of, I think that's why our parents and their parents wanted to come here to mm -hmm. retire because it's a life of ease. Chilled. As Especially if you can afford it, okay. right? If you okay. if you're okay, if you're comfortable, you don't mm -hmm. have to have buku money. But mm -hmm. if you're comfortable, mm -hmm. it's a life of ease. Mm -hmm. You don't stress, right? Enjoyment. I see the enjoyment going. <laughs> like I'm telling you, when I go back home, I like break out. But when I'm here, it's like my face mm -hmm. is like, <sighs> who's this? Do you do you see yourself settling down in Ghana? In the future, yes. In the future, I yeah. want to get to a place where I will be able to live here part time, live mm -hmm. in the U.S. part time, to kind of like. Mm -hmm. get used to it or maybe create something for myself mm. but i do see myself settling here at some point wow you know having kids getting married here in ghana i could do it hmm. if i'm comfortable enough i okay. could do it yeah okay i see yeah. that's very interesting <laughs> my next question is 
what do you wish you knew about Ghana before moving or even visiting? Okay, let me think about this. Something that caught you off guard, like I wish I knew this before coming. How disorganized it is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very disorganized. The bribery. Bribery. I mean, <laughs> I wish I knew. It starts from the airport. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it does. Absolutely. It starts in the airport. It starts from the airport. I wish I knew. But somehow, um, it makes it look there was a scenario where a drone footage has to be acquired around a national security zone mm -hmm. and legally you would have to pay five thousand dollars to be able to acquire that drone drone footage but because ghana is ghana the person end up spending 40 ghana cities to acquire the same drone footages is it good or bad bad it's bad yes it's bad mm -hmm. because there are um rules and regulations put in place for a reason and i'm saying this because i have experience i am a drone pilot mm. So, you know, when I'm in certain areas and mm -hmm. they won't allow me to fly and whatnot, I mean, at the end of the day, it's for security purposes, right? right? So why do you even have the security rules and regulations in place if it's not even going to be put? It's not going to be practiced. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> Just make it free for all of us. Yeah. You know? I feel you. I feel yeah. you. Did you even try, you know, establishing any business in Ghana so far? Not yet, but I, I definitely have my eyes on it. It's okay. definitely a work in progress. I haven't thought about anything yet, but I do want to. Okay. It's definitely interesting. Would you advise people to come to Ghana and do a business? I would. Um, I would encourage the diasporans. If you're Ghanaian and you live abroad, please, please, please try to take what you can from abroad and bring it back home mm. to create a better Ghana for everyone. Because okay. I think that's the, that's the least you could do. Mm. From mm. being fortunate enough to have lived there or maybe be born there or just experience life there mm -hmm. take the good things so that we can bring it back home and mm -hmm. establish something good for ourselves Interesting. the white man doesn't always have to come and take from us you know we can invest in the country bring back and pour more mm -hmm. into the country mm -hmm. you've been here you've you've seen around you've done visibility checks i think you know what kind of business would work and make profit in a short period of time i imagine I am, some few business you think would be able to be I, successful i don't think i'm an expert on that but mm. based off of what i've seen so far Real estate. Real estate. Number one. Hmm. Or, yeah, real estate, whether it be commercial, residential. Um, the more businesses you have, the more possibilities for employment. I see. Um, people are coming at an exponential rate to tour the country, to patronize, you know, especially for historical mm -hmm. reasons, the mm -hmm. black Americans, mm -hmm. you know, they all want to see the hype. Mm -hmm. They're going to need places to stay. Mm. If they decide they want to come here and stay longer, they're still going to need places to mm. stay. So I, I feel like real estate would be something that I'd be incredibly interested in. Wow. Well, thank you so much for mm -hmm. talking to me. Now, before I let you go, there's a lot of young women moving from the US, UK, Canada, and single women, beautiful, and rushing to the continent, not just here in Ghana, but other African countries. Why do you think it's like, it's this, it's like this? I don't really know, but for me, I always wanted to find a man here because I feel like when the men from Ghana go to the States, they, ad ad they adapt the, to the culture and they, they get used to the way the black American, they take on the, black, the bad black American traits. Mm. And like what is not it? even the good ones, just... <laughs> you can say anything. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You, you can they're see. They're like, they're not on the right path. Hmm. They're not. They don't have their head on straight. They Give allow things to distract them. They come to America to become rappers. Not to okay. say being a rapper is bad, but honey, if you ain't got the talent, don't force it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, be yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to look down on women because you see the videos and you think it's cool and this mm. and that. I feel like they come to the states and they forego their morals. But I feel like men here. I don't, I'm not going to say all of them, but you will, for, and for me, this mm -hmm. is for me personally, mm -hmm. I feel like I'll be able to relate better to them, um, share similar values, preserve our culture, because a lot of um, Africans too, or Ghanaians, when they come to the States, mm -hmm. they want to pretend like they don't understand their language. Mm. Why? Mm. I want to preserve my culture and where I come from. So for me, that would be the reason that mm. I would come to the U.S. Mm. to find a man here. So you, you want to go to the main source mm -hmm. where the it's not corrupted yes not corrupted. and i don't want my i want my children to have the organic Ghanaian hmm. upbringing okay you know okay. 
Wow. That's very interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. So honestly, someone is watching this, they are inspired. They really want to move to Ghana, not temporary or go back and forth, but permanently. What advice can you give to someone like that? So as someone who's not in Ghana permanently, I, I'm, I'm not spewing out facts, but I can spew out what I have seen and what I mm -hmm. would recommend. Mm -hmm. Definitely save because Ghana is not what you think. It is. Ghana it's is not cheap. It's not cheap. Ghana is not the cheap. way you think. There are places where you pay some dollars. Mm -hmm. If you want to combine uh, accommodation, excuse me, there are places where you'll have to pay two years in advance. Mm. We don't even do that in the States. No. So you have, please save. Mm. Please know what you're coming to do to get money. Like, yeah. whatever. I mean, Ghana is not cheap. Here, You'd have to work yeah. your ass off. Do know why you're here. coming. Have a purpose. Have a source of income, a mm. steady source of income. Mm. Don't cool. play with your money. <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard someone say, oh, you guys are moving to Ghana because. You just want to make money from the citizens. Aww. So what do you think about that? Because Chinese is here, and they are not playing. They are making money, right? Yeah. Lebanese. Why not Black Americans or even the diasporans make the same money? I don't understand why the person commented something like that. I want. I would rather look at it from the standpoint of mm. come to Ghana to invest in Ghana, and for Christ's sake, it's where you're from. Why wouldn't you want to invest, invest in where you're in from? Where you're from? Exactly create new opportunities. Uh, uh, fortunately, we're in a good place to where um, we're fortunate enough to be okay for most of us in the States. Mm -hmm. We're okay. We're mm -hmm. comfortable. Mm -hmm. So if you're more comfortable than a majority of mm -hmm. the people here, why not come and try to help them out? Wow. Wow. Someone told me America is dangerous. It can be. It can be. Mm -hmm. What do you think is happening in America right now and where that is going? It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's not good. And I know I've heard from a lot of people that they would, um, a lot of non guineans that they are come rushing to the motherland to get away from the racism, the shootings, everything going on in America right now that I just, I... 46 people was, were killed just this morning. So a lot of people are saying, honestly, you are advising people to move, you know, but then you have times of leaving anytime you want to leave because you have an American passport, mm -hmm. if that's the case. If you are to give up your American passport, leave, settle down in Ghana, work, contribute to the development of the nation, will you do it and why? Mm. If no, why? Okay. Well, that's definitely an advantage to have an American passport. Mm. It's definitely nice to be able to choose and come in and out as I please. But the question, the, my answer would depend on how comfortable I am, mm. how established I am. The way I see it, you know how people are like, you want to build your own business? Don't quit your nine to five unless your business that you've built is sustaining you. The U.S. is my nine to five, okay? <laughs> Ghana is my business. I cannot quit my nine to yeah. five unless my business mm -hmm. is thriving. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I see that's it. That's true. So until the business here has thrived mm -hmm. and you can rely on it 100%, that's mm -hmm. the only time you would be able to. Or at least 90%. Or 90%. <laughs> Do you have any advice for those watching? And also your social media, you can share your social media, what you're doing. And then if people want to follow you around and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you can. Okay, so the two main ones that I have, um, Ganama is my primary one, it's G-H-A-N-A-M-A-A. -A -A -A. And then my secondary one, I haven't posted in a while, but I'm <laughs> going to get back to it. I do drone footage. Okay, I saw So that. it's called Aerial Enjoyment. Aerial underscore enjoyment. So wow. I would love for you all to follow me and I'll follow you back. Well, before <laughs> I let you go, I don't know if this would be, uh, I don't know, it's, I don't think it's offensive, you know. Do you think being a chief enjoyment minister would be able to be prolonged with a high cost <laughs> of living right now? And that's the thing that I tell a lot of people, right? Mm. And that's one thing I love about Ghana. You can have a good time and not spend so much, much money. money. Go to the beach, like, you go grocery shopping, right? You gotta eat. Mm -hmm. Why not buy some, I don't know, some meat, some fruits, some, just a little bit of drinks, whatever. Take it to the beach, bring your speaker, bring your hookah if you have one, and turn up. Like, mm -hmm. it's not every day turn wow. up at the club, bottle, bottle, bottle. Mm -hmm. No, that's not life. Wow. You know what I mean? She really <laughs> knows what she's talking about. If someone is watching and is interested to chill with you, are you yes, down? Yes, yes. Let's chill. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I, don't, I hate asking people if they are, you know, what is their status? You wow. can tell me in the ears if you don't want to tell them. 
I well, just need it for my say, own reason. Let's just say I'm not married. Okay. I've been I've been asked quite a bit while I'm here. Oh really? Whether I'm married or not. I yeah. don't know if it's they get confused by this finger. Right. This is not my oh, ring finger. I'm not this seeing is, that. Who gave you that? Myself. Oh, okay. This is my marriage finger. Don't I'm worry, I'll, re I'll replace <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm not married. Oh, I'll wow. just I'll just say that. So you're single and ready to mingle? I need to put you in the box. Don't what? do me like that. Mm, well, that's that's another conversation for okay, another day. For another time. <laughs> so she is chief enjoyment minister. Yeah. She's doing great. She's loving the motherland. <laughs> She's enjoying her experience being here. You know, I love talking to people like yourself to really spread out the news, you know, to really inspire people to, you know, follow their heart, come back to the continent, come visit, you know, see how it's going. Is there something you like that you would love to stay for a long period of time? If yes. If no, you can always go back. Your passport is still with you. Mm -hmm. that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So yeah, follow her on Instagram, uh, Chief Enjoyment Minister, and other social media platforms. The names will be on the screen or in the description box. And yes, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I had fun. I enjoyed our conversation. I enjoyed it too. <laughs> and then I, would, I hope you'd, you'd find some. Guys, you, you can try and shoot your shot. She's probably <laughs> single. Slide in the DMs. And, and yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs>